Today in Israel, 11 months after the war started, there's 140,000 people that have been displaced and cannot go back home. 100,000 of those people are from the northern border with Lebanon. The other 40,000 live on the Gaza and Egyptian border in the south, and their communities are still damaged and need to be rebuilt before they go back home. Let me tell you about what it's like being evacuated from your home. Our friends in Gaza like making these and then tossing them across the border towards people's homes. So when one of these flies into your house and makes a big hole in your kid's bedroom wall, then you take the kids and you go to the car, even though it's also got shrapnel damage, and you drive south for a couple of hours until you reach the Dead Sea where there's hotels and you can stay there out of harm's way for a while. Except there's a bunch of other families that have evacuated. It's chaos. The lobby is full of people waiting to get a room, except there's not enough rooms available. So you sit there for a few hours waiting for the hotel to figure something out. The kids are restless, they're hungry, they're scared, and you just want a place to stay for the night. You look online and you find a little agricultural community nearby, so you drive down there and they put you up. It's not a hotel, it's not a bed and breakfast, it's like a dorm where there's a small room that you can occupy together with your four kids. You end up staying there for the next two months while you wait for the government to figure out how to help you. Your kids have no school to go to, there's really nothing to do in this place, you just sit there and wait. Finally, the government says that it's safe enough for you to return to your city and they offer you a place to stay. You get there and the place is a lot better than where you've been for the last couple of months. It's in your city at least and the kids can find something to do, but it's a tiny place and you're cramped and you'll end up waiting for another six months for your apartment to get fixed up. Meanwhile, back at the hotels on the Dead Sea and the Red Sea hotels in the city of Elat, it's a vacation spot for Israelis, the hotels are all packed. If your family was lucky enough to get a room at one of these hotels, you'll be staying here for a couple of months while you're waiting on the situation in the country to subside so that you can go back to your city. The hotel is doing a good job taking care of your children. There's actually trauma care specialists, these organizations that put up games and activities for the kids to take their mind off of the stress, get them moving, get them playing games, and also have some therapists there that they can talk to. And while the kids are busy doing that, you and many other parents are in the lobby on your phone talking to the bank because you haven't worked, because the money is running out, because everybody wants you to pay your bills. Anybody that's not staying at that hotel walks into the lobby and you can actually feel that there's an energy there. It's palpable. Everybody's on edge. And there can be a number of consequences with your work, with your business, with your property. It's been almost a year and we're just now starting to understand as a society how deeply we've been affected. Divorces, for example, are on the rise. Kids are getting into trouble. There's all kinds of social problems that happen in the hotels while people were waiting to, to go back home. Society has been shaken and things are all over the place. And it's going to take a while for us to figure this out, especially with wars continuing and, and these things keep flying. Take away from all this, actually, I don't know, we're still processing it. There's so many people today that have found themselves in very challenging life situations. And I just ask for your prayers. And I just hope that if you're going through challenging life situations, whatever they are, you can find hope, you can find healing, and you can process it. And then I pray for you. I pray that the God of Israel, the protector of Israel, the only one that can straighten all of this out, may He bless your life. And thanks for sticking around here in the story. Come back tomorrow, and I'll tell you another one.